The legislative session is winding down, but Iowa lawmakers still have to hammer out deals on a big tax bill and next year's budget. We're questioning two Senate leaders, Republican Senate President and Appropriations Chairman Charles Schneider and Democratic Leader Janet Peterson on this edition of Iowa Press. Funding for Iowa Press was provided by Friends, the Iowa Public Television Foundation, the Associated General Contractors of Iowa, the public's partner in building Iowa's highway, bridge, and municipal utility infrastructure. I'm a dad. I am a mom. I'm a kid. I'm a kid at heart. I'm a banker. I'm an Iowa banker. No matter who you are, there is an Iowa banker who is ready to help you get where you want to go. Iowa Bankers, allowing you to discover the genuine difference of Iowa banks. For decades, Iowa Press has brought you politicians and newsmakers from across Iowa and beyond. Now celebrating more than 40 years of broadcast excellence on statewide Iowa Public Television. This is the Friday, April 20 edition of Iowa Press. Here is David Yepsen. Iowa passed the 100th calendar day of the 2018 legislative session this past week, and there's still unfinished business to take care of before the legislature can adjourn. The Republican majority wants to pass a tax bill, but the House and Senate have yet to agree on what that looks like. And negotiations are underway between lawmakers in both chambers on a final state budget for next year. Well, what else might legislators approve in these final days? We've gathered a pair of Iowa Senate leaders to discuss the status of everything. Republican Charles Schneider of West Des Moines is the Senate President and Appropriations Committee Chairman, and Janet Peterson of Des Moines leads the minority Democrats. Senators, welcome. Thank, Thank you, you for taking time out of your schedules to be here today. Sure. Appreciate Thanks it. for having us. Across the table, in her inaugural performance on Iowa Press, Brianne Fonensteel is State House reporter for the Des Moines Register, and Kay Henderson is news director for Radio Iowa. Senator Schneider, uh, Republicans, since I've been alive, have been an advocate of cutting taxes. Why didn't Republicans head into the 2018 session with a blueprint to cut taxes? Why is it taking you so long to agree among yourselves? Well, this is the first time we've talked about tax policy in the legislature in about 20 years. So these conversations don't happen very often, and we want to make sure that we get the policy right. And there are a couple things that we all agree on, even though we don't have a final plan in place. One of them is we, we understand that if we do nothing, Iowans are going to be paying $188 million more in state income tax in 2019 than they otherwise would because of federal deductibility. The second thing is we, we all believe and agree that our tax code is not competitive. We rank 40th out of the 50 states according to the Tax Foundation in terms of competitiveness. We have the highest corporate income tax rate, the fifth highest personal income tax rate, and we need to do better as a state if we expect to grow. So what we want to do is bring our tax code into the 21st century, lower rates, make our code simpler so it's easier to file and takes less time to file a tax return, and modernize our, our sales tax uh, revenue stream as well. Senator Peterson, is there anything in the governor's plan, the Senate Republicans' first plan, the House Republicans' plan, the Senate Republicans' second plan that Democrats can vote for? Well, uh, you know, the tax plan is still kind of a mystery to us as to Iowans and what we're actually going to see in the tax plan coming out behind closed doors. Um, Democrats have said all along that we'd be willing to work on a tax plan as long as it's fair and that it takes into account our current um, budget situation. Senator Schneider, if Republicans are in agreement on all of these broad points, what are the sticking points? What's holding up the conversation right now? Well, there are a lot of moving parts. So one of the things that we, I think, all are interested in doing is getting rid of federal deductibility. And that's something that not a lot of people understand, and it's hard to explain. But basically, it means that if your federal taxes go down, your state income taxes go up. And in order to get rid of that in a way that makes sure that some Iowans don't end up paying more state tax, you have to take other things into account, such as Section 179 depreciation and qualified business income. So we're taking a comprehensive look at, at the entire picture. We want to make sure everybody understands uh, how, how everything fits together and that we're putting something together that truly brings Iowa into the 21st century and makes us competitive. And that takes time. Is one of the key sticking points the size of the cuts? 
Republicans have, have authored a plan that's $1.3 billion over five years. The Senate plan is $2 billion over that same time frame. What's, what's the final number? Well, we're close to an agreement, so we're getting closer to knowing what that number is going to be. And I think uh, we all realize that we need something that's truly going to provide tax relief for Iowans, make sure they're not paying more in state income tax than they otherwise would because of federal deductibility, and brings our code into, into the 21st century. And there's a way to do that responsibly so that we're sure we're funding our priorities like K-12 education, Medicaid, public safety. And that's where we're trying to get. And I'm confident we'll get there. Do you have a precise number? Not, what's your, what's not, your guess? Not today. You don't I don't have it. one to share today. But when we roll that out, obviously everyone's going to know what it is. Uh, we have to follow the REC estimate when but we're setting that's our the budget. Revenue estimating conference. Correct. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Senator Peterson, um, a few years ago, Democrats rolled out an end to what uh, Senator Schneider has been referring to as federal deductibility. It's a it's a deduction you get on your state income tax to deduct whatever your federal tax bill may have been. Um, if that were just the only component getting rid of that deduction, would Democrats vote for this bill? I think there's a lot of interest among Democrats in taking a look at that measure. We haven't seen the runs, um, so I can't say, you know, for certain, um, and speak on behalf of all my caucus, but I do think we're looking um, for ways to make Iowa look more competitive, and I think that that's an issue that both Democrats and Republicans can agree um, kind of skews the way um, people look at our tax structure in Iowa. Senator Peterson, what, if anything, do Democrats think can be saved through, through tax cuts? What's, what's your answer to the question uh, we were answer, asking Senator Schneider? How much of a tax cut can Iowa afford? Anything? Well, we do know that there will be more revenue or um, the, t the state of Iowa will get more revenue based on the federal tax cuts. And um, we understand that Iowans probably want some of that, you know, in their pocketbook. So, so there's, there's room for some tax reform this year. Let me go with both, with, with both of you real quickly, some of the other issues that are in this uh tax bill, and I'll start with you, Senator Schneider, corporate tax cuts. Will there be cuts in corporate taxes? We would like to address corporate taxes, uh, we in the Senate, and I think um, the House and the governor are in agreement that we need to at least start taking a look at our corporate tax structure and do something with federal deductibility there so that we can lower our rates and make them more competitive. They're 12% now? Yes. What do you want to try to get it to? As low as we possibly can and still be responsible the, when we're budgeting so that we can You don't want to give priorities. me numbers today. What? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, I've a, seen the it's, a, it's a negotiation. It's a process. And I don't want to throw something out there that might uh, be misinterpreted by the people we're negotiating with. The, the point is, when we get something and we agree on a final number, it's going to be shared, it's going to be widely available, it's something we're all but going to be proud of. The governor in January said, don't do it this year. Is there now broad agreement that you're not going to cut corporate taxes this year? It may be pushed off to future years? No, we, we, as you know, we in the Senate have wanted to address everything. I mean, one thing we can't afford to do is to do nothing. And this is the best opportunity we're going to have, at least while I'm in the legislature, to address personal and corporate income taxes. Senator Peterson, Republicans are talking about putting triggers in this. This is a device where if the revenues don't turn out what they are, the tax cuts won't go into effect. Is that something Democrats can support? Um, it depends on what the triggers are and um, if it will safeguard our state's budget. I mean, if you look, we have still have a pretty dark cloud hanging over the state with our existing budget situation, and we've seen a lot of cuts made to services Iowans count on. And so we don't want the state to continue to face bad budget year after bad budget year. Well, that was going back to the earlier question I had for you. I mean, there are a lot of needs out there. Maybe should Iowa even be doing anything on federal deductibility? Well, we would like to see the state um, balance its budget first. We believe that's the most important thing, um, making sure that we're funding our schools, making sure that our health care system is back in check before we start um, making extensive tax cuts that we may or may not be able to afford. Senator Schneider, taxing credit unions, the fight between credit unions and banks, um, Will credit unions wind up paying more in taxes as a result of these tax negotiations? 
Well, what we were trying to do in the Senate bill that we passed originally was to level the playing field between community banks in particular and the largest of the credit unions, of which there are three or, or five that have expanded kind of the scope of their original charters that are operating more widely across the state and that are getting into, into business lines that community banks are also offering. And what the community bankers will tell you is that because those largest of the credit unions don't pay any tax to the state or pay little tax to the state, that they're able to um, have a competitive advantage over banks when it comes to pricing for loans. So will you do anything about it? That remains to be seen. Again, it's a part of the negotiation process that, we're, uh, that we have right now with the governor and with the House. Senator Peterson, do Democrats want to do something about that? Well, I sure hope that we don't raise taxes on um, credit unions. Um, I think that we need to be doing more for all of our financial institutions that, uh, you know, have a stake in Iowa and have uh, their businesses here. You know, they're struggling with some of these online um, types of financial uh, institutions now that um, I think we need to be doing more to support them. Well, Senator Schneider, what about that? that that point. Will there be something done about online sales so that the sales tax is collected on those? That, that's a part of everybody's um, plan that, that's been proposed so far. The governor has proposed that, the House uh, has proposed it, and, and we've proposed that as well. We already have a sales tax. Right. I mean, that issue is, is uh, a moot point. Uh, what we need to do is make sure that it, it reflects a 21st century economy so that we have a, f a fair playing field for everybody. Yeah. Governor Reynolds in her condition of the state address laid out a plan to address uh, tax credits. She asked the legislature to convene a panel and to review each of those independently and to come up with a plan for which should and shouldn't be addressed. Senator Schneider, why hasn't that, that been part of the conversation so far? Well, as, as you may recall, in the tax plan that we put forward a couple of months ago, we actually proposed phasing out a lot of tax credits. So what we're talking about right now with the governor and with the House is whether or not to, to phase out the ones that we originally proposed or... Uh, whether to maybe phase out some of them and take a look or a study at some of the others as Governor Reynolds has proposed. I think there's a lot of merit to that, to sitting down uh, with different stakeholders to see uh, what, which of these returns actually does have a positive ROI for the state and which simply just need to go away. Is that still part of the conversation as, as these negotiations continue? It is. And how do Democrats feel about that? Well, um, the first Republican plan uh, got rid of solar tax credits originally, and, and you know that's a big job growth um, tax credit that we'd hate to see that disappear. They also got rid of one that went to volunteer firefighters across our state, and you know that's a small thank you that our state can give those who serve communities across our state. So um, we'd like to see. Um, a different consideration on which tax cuts really make sense to. Sen Senator Schneider, why don't we debate in this state tax credits on an annual basis just like you do appropriations? Uh, I, got yeah, that, I think that's a great idea, David. I, we should do that. We have, our tax code now is basically a Franken code of various deductions, exemptions, and credits that have been patched together as an in an attempt to make our, our tax code look competitive. And we need to take a look at what we're doing and see what we can get rid of and phase out so that we can lower our rates, make our code more attractive to more people, and provide an opportunity for more businesses to invest here, to grow jobs here, and to attract people here. Brown's question also raises another point. Is one of the reasons that Republicans are unwilling to deal with tax credits is because, frankly, a lot of Republican interest groups benefit from those and you don't want to make them mad in an election year? Well, I disagree with the premise of this statement. As, as I mentioned in the first tax bill that we introduced, we eliminated a lot of tax credits. We're, we would like to get rid of a lot of them so that we can make our code more fair, so that we can lower rates, keep more people in the state, grow the economy, and bring more jobs here. In the Senate, but other Republicans don't seem to want to do that. Well, right? uh, Representative Grassley last year introduced a bill that would have phased out all the tax credits. Governor Reynolds has talked about putting together a task force to look at the different tax credits we have to see which are worth containing. So I, I disagree with that premise. Republicans are very much interested in making our tax code fairer and flatter and more attractive. And this is a question to each of you. One tax credit that can go, which, which would you say? I'm not going to point out any specific one. I mean, there are a list of tax credits that we ought to take a look at. You can look at our original bill, Brienne, and see all the tax credits we, we included in there to phase out. 
Uh, Governor Reynolds has a long list of tax credits that she'd like to look at. Uh, Representative Grassley put every single tax credit, I think, into his bill last year to phase out. Senator Peterson. I think we need to look at the research and activities tax credit and just see how well that's working and um, take some time and um, see if that's actually creating jobs and growing our economy. And that is a tax credit where um, the companies that apply for it get a check right from the state should that end well that's why i think we need to take a strong look at it and senator schneider should the state stop writing checks to companies that apply for that research and activities credit this is a credit that we do need to take a stronger look at i think there are some ways that this credit is being abused and we need to shore those loopholes up so that it's being used for what it was truly intended. Let's shift to the budget. Um, Republicans in the House and Republicans in the Senate have released sort of an overall sketch of what the next year's state budget should look like, about $5 million difference between the two of them. Um, given the status quo nature of uh, those budget plans, Senator Schneider, will there be layoffs in state government? That's up to the department heads to make those decisions. What we're interested in doing is making sure that we're able to fund the priorities that we all hold in common, K-12 education, public safety, making sure we've got a, a solid Medicaid system so that we've got a good safety net for people. Those are the things that we want to fund. Uh, Senator Peterson, give Iowans an idea of what they might notice given the, t the sketch that you've seen thus far. Well, I think Iowans are going to see more cuts to essential services. Um, you know, the Republicans fought and fought over the mid-year cut, budget cut amount, and so it, we didn't get a budget cut in this year's budget until really the end of the year. And what Iowans saw was um, a big um, um, cut to our universities, and also uh, we saw beds taken away from um, um, Lutheran Services of Iowa for our children. And so these are cuts that are going to hurt Iowans. As part of the property tax reform back in 2013, the state has committed to paying about $150 million annually to cities and counties to make up for some of their local lost revenue. And so a lot of local leaders have been very concerned about whether that will continue into the future. Senator Schneider, can you offer them any guidance about what they can see next year? Sure. Well, here's the big picture. We protected those uh, property tax backfill payments through two rounds of deappropriations now. That was one of our priorities. And the reality is that a lot of local governments have seen their property tax revenues increase since we enacted the property tax bill. So we think it's fair to start looking at a phase out of, of the property tax backfill. Now, a lot of local governments have even lowered their levies which undermines the case for them to continue getting a property tax backfill from the state. Now there are different communities. Some communities haven't seen their property tax revenues increase. So we think that there ought to be different uh, levels of phase out or some kind of protections for those communities that haven't seen the growth. And when will that phase out begin? Will that start this year? We want to do it responsibly. No one's talking about doing it in fiscal year 19 now, or yeah, fiscal year 19. What we're talking about is uh, giving communities and local governments time to plan and to get more input from them and do this in a way that's fair. And Senator Peterson, state leaders have said we shouldn't be on the, on the hook for paying for both state functions and local functions. This is $150 million annually. Should that be put to something else, health care, education? Well, when they did the commercial property tax, um, the backfill did not have a sunset as part of it. And I think that's part of how they got local um, leaders to um, you know, stand down as they were doing the commercial property tax. So there are a lot of mayors across our state that have been reaching out saying, we don't have the revenue stream that will make up for this. And they're very concerned about it. So is there an answer? Can the state continue paying the backfill to, to keep that afloat? Well, I think that the state needs to make sure that it's keeping its end of the bargain. Senator Schneider. Otherwise, otherwise property taxes will go up for people across our state. Senator Schneider, something that happened in the Senate this week was a committee took action and then there was a floor vote changing the handbook for senators and changing the Senate code of ethics. Um, why did it take so long to respond to, um, you know, harassment and retaliation issues that were raised by um, Kirsten Anderson five years ago? Well, I want to say first and foremost that sexual harassment has no place in the Iowa Senate. 
and we want to create an environment that's safe and in which people feel comfortable. And what we did is, after, these, after this incident happened, we brought in former State Senate President Mary Kramer and former U.S. Ambassador, and we solicited input from her as to how to best move forward. Uh, we also hired an HR director to work with both the House and the Senate. Uh, Janet and I sat across the table and sometimes next to each other at the table talking about how to improve our employee handbook. We, we hired outside counsel to look at the suggestions that we came up with and to put something together for us so that we knew that it was done well and done correctly. It takes time to get all that in place, but I feel good about what we have. It clearly defines harassment, sexual harassment, and retaliation. It clearly sets out a policy for employees to follow if they feel they've been harassed. It specifies that employees can use outside counsel to investigate claims of harassment, and it requires an annual review. And Senator, Senator Peterson, Pe what, you okay with that? I think that it's a good first step. You know, the one thing that we know has been a problem in the Senate is that the retaliation was never dealt with in the Kirsten Anderson case, and that really has had a chilling effect on people's, you know, comfort level in coming forward. Uh, I think the most important thing, now that we have new rules in place, is just ensuring that people follow the rules. Is there also a new sheriff in town now that Senate uh, Republican leader Bill Dix has left the building? He resigned after some images posted online showed him kissing a lobbyist. He resigned immediately. Now that he's gone, are some of these issues, quote unquote, resolved? Well, I certainly hope that people will have a, a greater comfort level of coming forward if they have an issue. Um, you know, taxpayers paid $1.75 million for the um, Kirsten Anderson case. Plus, they also continued to let the perpetrator and those who retaliated against Kirsten Anderson continue to stay um, as state employees and on the, working on the taxpayer's dime. So now that we don't have uh, those people in the legislature, I'm hoping that something will change. Senator Schneider, um, as the new sheriff, um, you had a you had an employee who went through harassment training this spring and then harassed somebody on the Senate floor. And that um, person is gone. Right. And they're not coming back. So we have we have policies in place now to deal with these situations where we didn't before. The first so for the first time I've since I've been in the Senate, we have a good harassment, sexual harassment and retaliation policy. Brianne, just a few minutes left. Shifting to another conversation here, access to health care and mental health services has been a huge conversation this year in the legislature. The governor signed a bill that would expand access to mental health services. Senator Schneider, does that do enough? <laughs> Me? Yes. <laughs> uh, we, uh, we need to make sure that we've got a good uh, Medicaid system and a good health insurance system in place. I visited with a lot of providers in my district who have told me about problems they've had with the rollout of MCOs. I've talked to people in my district who've had a problem with it. And it's something that we need to continue to pay attention to, and we need to get better at it. That's something Governor Reynolds mentioned in her condition of the state speech, and we support her in the, in the Iowa Senate. Has anything been done this year that Iowans can point to and say this issue has been addressed? We've got uh, a new Department of Human Services Director, Jerry Foxhoven, um, whom I know personally and in whom I have a lot of confidence. We have a new Medicaid Director who's got a lot of experience in, in another state for managing uh, uh, Medicaid. So, and they're negotiating new contracts with the MCOs and bringing new MCOs in as well. And a new actuary has been hired. So, so I, think, I think the steps or the pieces of the puzzle are coming together to make sure we've got a solid system in place. Senator Peterson, pieces coming together? Well, I would disagree. The pieces are not coming together. The only um, piece that's coming together is more assurances for the MCOs that they'll get paid what they're looking for. What we still have problems with are our health care providers around the state who haven't got paid for the services they provide and for Iowans who are looking for health care services and not getting them approved by the MCOs are continuing to get denied and um, that's just outrageous and unfortunately it's hurting the infrastructure of our health care system across the state. Senator Schneider, uh, a health care issue that struck other states harder but is hitting in Iowa is the opioid crisis. Mm -hmm. The House passed a bill to address some of the issues surrounding that. It's pending in the Senate. Do you guys have a problem with that plan? That bill will move very soon. It uh, will get done. 
Uh, also, there is um, in the in the House uh, a debate about the fetal heartbeat bill. Do you think that should be attached to a budget bill here in the final days? Uh, that's a part of the conversation that we'll have going uh, going next couple weeks as we negotiate the budget. Senator uh, Peterson, how long will the session be extended by Democrats if if that is added to a budget bill? Um, I don't see that being added to a budget bill. I don't believe they have the votes. Um, both of you, would it be a good idea if Iowa had a law that says the, but the state legislature should end on a certain date? Would that help things along, Senator Schneider? Uh, who knows? I mean, the, the important thing, look, we're not focused on, on dates. We're focused on good policy and putting forth a responsible budget. That's why we're here. That's what we want to get done, regardless of when it happens. Well. Senators, I've got a firm date for my journey <laughs> here. <laughs> thank you both for, for being with us. Thank you. Thanks. And thank you for joining us. We'll be back with another edition of Iowa Press next week at our regular times, Friday night at 7.30, and study at noon on our main IPTV channel with a rebroadcast on our Dot Three World channel Saturday morning at 8.30. For all of us here at Iowa Public Television, I'm David Yepsen, and thanks for joining us today. Funding for Iowa Press was provided by Friends, the Iowa Public Television Foundation, the Associated General Contractors of Iowa, the public's partner in building Iowa's highway, bridge, and municipal utility infrastructure. I'm a dad. I am a mom. I'm a kid. I'm a kid at heart. I'm a banker. I'm an Iowa banker. No matter who you are, there is an Iowa banker who is ready to help you get where you want to go. Iowa bankers, allowing you to discover the genuine difference of Iowa banks.